while back I was contacted by this guy who has a website talking about people who have concert tickets like this one and they give their experience of what happened during the concert if they liked the concert and the different experiences that happened along the way so he contacted me because I have a series of videos up spotlighting my um, ticket stubs and I keep my ticket stubs in here so just about every concert I've ever gone to I see the ticket stub and I keep it in here there might be like one or two concerts that um, that is not in here I remember I saw the, the Jackson 5 back in the 70s when I was a kid at the state fair and I wish I had that concert <laughs> ticket to this day um, but I was too young to um, know the value of keeping concert tickets so I don't have that one unfortunately but I have most of the concert um, ticket stubs that I've gone to and I have everyone from Living Color to old Lolly, Lollapalooza concert I went to in 1992 I have Danzig I have Jack Bruce and Ian Hunter I have Ingve Momstein I have Ozzy I have Joan Jett I have Ziggy Marley have just about everyone in here. The only three people that I don't have in here that I wish I had in here was Janet, uh, Janet Joplin, Janice Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Jim Morrison. I was too young to check them out when I was, you know, a, a kid or whatever. So I don't have those concert tickets. But just about everyone else, you know, David Bowie, um, Kiss, have all those concert stuff. So I am very happy to have those, and I do cherish those. And it's great because um, you can definitely see the price difference of seeing a concert back in the 70s and 80s compared to the concert tickets now. You know, you're playing like triple and more than triple the amount of concerts back in back in the day. You know, you could spend probably I would say ten dollars to go see Kiss. And now, if you go see Kiss, it's like. 200 if you want a, a good seat, unfortunately. Not to say Kiss is not a good band, but it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous sometimes. Anyway, back on the subject of concert tickets. So anyway, this guy contacted me. He wanted me to do a video about a concert that I've gone to. And during the time he contacted me, I was extremely busy, so I didn't have an opportunity to uh, respond to him. But now... I have the opportunity to make a video and I'm making a video. And the concert I want to talk about is the Alice Cooper Show and this was at the Joe Louis Arena on Saturday, October 31st, 1987. Now if I'm not mistaken, this is the concert that MTV broadcast live at Joe Louis Arena. So this is a... Um, historic uh, event, at least to me it is. I've always been a fan of Alice Cooper because I've always been a fan of horror and sci-fi and Alice Cooper was one of the first uh, musicians to bring horror and sci-fi um, to the concert stage. He wasn't the first but he was one of the first. So, always been a fan and keep in mind, just to give you guys a little backstory in the 80s there were a lot of um, bands around, a lot of hair metal bands and they were doing stuff that was similar to Alice Cooper. You had Motley Crue around, you had Grim Reaper, um, you had um, all these bands that were doing something similar to what Alice Cooper was doing. Don't forget Wasp, you had Wasp that were drinking blood and doing all kind of crazy stuff on stage too. Anyway, you had all these bands that were doing stuff and Alice Cooper wasn't given that many shows. And during the 80s, Alice Cooper took sort of a, um, a different direction in his music. He started to make music that was more punk oriented or n not punk necessarily, but more new age, um, new wave, I'm sorry, new wave um, oriented. Which was great. I, I like the stuff. Uh, the albums that I'm referring to is Flush the Fashion, Dada, and um, he had one other one, Special Forces. Great albums, but they weren't the typical Alice Cooper albums. You know, a lot of his old fans, like myself, we liked the stuff that was back in the 70s. You know, the Welcome to My Nightmare and Billion Dollar Babies and, and that type of stuff. 
anyway, Alice Cooper um, started to think, at least I think he did, about what's, what was happening in the 80s, the late 80s, with all these hair metal bands, you know, coming out with stuff that was similar to stuff that he did back in the 70s, and he brought back the Alice Cooper show, which was great. And when he started touring, doing the Alice Cooper show, of course, I had to be there. The first couple of times um, when I saw Alice Cooper, when he brought back you know, the, some of the original stage um, antics that he had back in the 70s, I was front row. And I remember at one concert in particular, there was some type of monster that was um, running around on stage. And Alice Cooper chopped the head off and all the blood just sort of like went in the audience and it got all over me and it was just the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> and yes, I still have that jacket somewhere in my house with Alice Cooper's uh, blood on it. So, or the monster that Alice Cooper killed, I have its blood on it. So anyway, I thought that was really, really cool. But as I said, I went to a lot of concerts and I went to a lot of Alice Cooper concerts, and one of my favorite ones was when he was in concert at the Joe Louis Arena, set that's September, um, Saturday, October the 31st, 1987. This was an excellent show because MTV was there recording the show. Um, I'm probably in, in the video somewhere, I'm probably like a little dot somewhere because I wasn't front row in this concert. I was. Um, in the balcony somewhere but I still had great great visuals and, and whatnot and it was a great great show and just to give you a little background of how I got uh, into Alice Cooper I remember I think this was uh, back in the uh, very early 80s or the late 70s I remember watching TV late at night because I stay up late and watch horror movies and whatnot and I remember my first the first time that I got exposed to Alice Cooper and I just happened to be turning the channels and all of a sudden there was Alice Cooper and he was doing some of the craziest stuff he was hanging himself he was he had the straight jacket on you know he was singing the uh, was it the ballad of Dwight Fry and all this other stuff and I remember in the other room my dad was watching the Alice Cooper show too so I know he was probably going what the hell is this you know but I was loving it and I thought it was just so so cool and it definitely left an imprint in my brain when I saw that because that stuff was just out there and ever since then I wanted to go see Alice Cooper and as a young kid growing up I never had the money you know I was struggling you know with allowances and, and whatnot I never was able to afford to go to Alice Cooper uh, or if I did have the money to go see Alice Cooper um, back in, in those days in the 70s um, I didn't have a car to go see Alice Cooper so it was, that kind of sucked so when the 80s came around and he started touring in the late 80s rather and he started bringing back the Nightmare Returns that was actually the name of the tour um, when he came out with that, I started to go to just about Al every Alice Cooper show <laughs> there was. You know, Alice Cooper come to Detroit, I was there. So this is one of the concerts that I, I went to. I remember going, I remember um, Alice Cooper's um, band was excellent. Um, he did all the, the classic stuff. Uh, he, I think in this concert he hung himself you know um, I remember that um, I kind of hated the fact that I wasn't front row but you can't be front row of every concert <laughs> and I have been front row of Ale one of that Alice well several Alice Cooper concerts so it wasn't that big of a deal but um, just to see someone who was um, so influential on the music scene uh, it was great and those of you who do not know this Alice Cooper is from Michigan uh, I'm not sure if he's from Detroit Michigan but he's from Michigan and we claim him as one of our own just like we claim um, Ted Nugent and Kid Rock and Iggy and 
the MC5 and Seduce and the Push Band and Ten Scribble, my band, <laughs> and all those guys. So, you know, we claim Alice Cooper as, as one of our own. So, it was a pleasure seeing Alice Cooper in concert. Um, I had a great time. It was great to see horror on stage. It was great to see something that was more than just some guys on stage playing instruments. You saw it was theater and I thought that was great. And you don't see that that much nowadays. You don't see a lot of theater on stage. Even some of the uh, the bands that will give you a lot of lighting and, and stuff like that on stage, you still don't get that theater. And Alice Cooper is one of the few that um, gave you that theater on stage and there were other bands in, in the 80s and the 70s they, they gave you that but nowadays it's probably too expensive to bring a lot of that stuff on stage so I remember when I saw Dio um, years ago he didn't have the dragon on stage probably because it's too expensive and if you see George Clinton now he doesn't have the spaceship you know landing on stage because it's too doggone expensive to carry a spaceship <laughs> or a dragon on stage unfortunately but you still get a good show I saw Alice Cooper I would say about maybe two years ago and it was still a great show and he still brings a lot of stuff on stage which I think is really really cool I think the only other band other than Alice Cooper that does bring a lot of um, special effects or whatnot on stage would be um, Judas Priest when I saw them but then again that was in the, in the 90s so I'm not sure if they're doing it. Uh, Motley Crue from what I've seen they still have um, a lot of power techniques and, and whatnot on stage and of course KISS still does it because you can't go to a KISS concert without seeing a lot of power techniques and a lot of theatrical stuff but anyway that's my short video on Alice Cooper when I saw him in concert and feel free to add this to my webs I mean to your website uh, I forgot the guy's name who has that website about people with concert tickets who like to talk about them anyway feel free to add this to your website and those of you who haven't seen my other videos of me talking about different concerts that I've gone to um, and the ticket stubs check check them out there I ha what I'll do is I'll link it to this video and you can kind of watch them all together if you want alright until next time love is the law and of course peace